What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be covering the smoothing methods of simple move and average and exponential smooth. So why use smoothing? So here we have our original time series and you see that it's jagged and hard to interpret what's really going on. But if we smooth our time series data, it's much easier to unveil the true trends that lie within our data. Now if we over smooth our data, we can lose track of these trends. And then after we create our smooth data, we can then make predictions for our newly created observations. Simple move and average. So simple move and average is the most basic smoothing procedure, where essentially we're going to take k observations and then average them together to form our smooth series. So if we set this k value equal to 1, it's going to result in no smoothing. And then as we increase our value of k, the smoothing effect is going to increase. So now let's do an example. So the formula for our smooth estimates are going to be equal to our y value at time t plus our y value at time t minus 1, and then so on and so on and so on, until our y value at time t minus k plus 1. And then this is going to be divided by k. So here we're going to use k is equal to 3. So the way the formula works is the first smooth estimate we can create is at time 3 because we're going to use the observation at time 3 and the past two observations, or these three observations. Now we can't start at time is equal to 2 because we have no observation for time 0. So at time is equal to 3 is going to be our first observation. And to find this value, it's just going to be the average of these three observations. So 1 plus 3 plus 2, which is going to create a value uh, divided by k which is going to be equal to 2. So we can say our smooth estimate at time 3 is 2. And then if we want to find our smooth estimate at time 4, we're just going to use these three values. So 3 plus 2 plus 4 divided by k, which is going to produce a value of 3. And then our smooth estimate at time 5, we're just going to use 6, 4, and 2. So 2 plus 4 plus 6 over 3, and we'll get a value of 4. And our smooth estimate times 6, we're just going to use 4 plus 6 plus 2 divided by 3, produces a value of 4. And then finally, our smooth estimate at times 7 is just going to be equal to 6 plus 2 plus 1 over 3 which gives a value of 3. So now that we found all our smoothed, or now that we smoothed out our original time series, we can also make predictions from our smooth series. So the prediction formula is just going to be equal to the predicted value at time t is equal to beta 0, where beta 0 is just going to be equal to our last smooth estimate. Or, since our time series ended at time 7, our smooth estimate at time 7, which we found to be 3. So if we wanted to predict a value of time 8, it would just be equal to our smooth estimate at time 3, I mean at time 7, which we found to be 3. If we wanted to predict a value at time 9, it would again just be 3. Predict a value at time 10, it would be 3. And so on, so on. We will always predict 3 for future observations. double smooth and average. So with double smooth and average, we're just going to smooth our already smoothed estimates. So we're still going to use k is equal to 3, but instead of applying to our original observations, we're just going to apply the same formula that we did for smoothing to our smoothed estimates. So we can't start until observation 5, because again we're going to take the value at time 5 and then take the last two observations. So each time we're going to smooth our estimates, we're going to lose k minus 1 observations. So our original time series had 7, so in our smooth series, k minus 1 is just equal to 2. So we're going to lose 2 observations, and then for our double smooth series, we're going to lose 4 observations. Okay, so the first smooth estimate, or smooth estimate at time 5, is just going to be equal to the average of our smoothed estimates. 
divided by k should produce a value of 3. And then our double smoothed estimate at time 6, we're going to use 3, 4, and 4. divided by k, which will produce a value of 3.66. And then finally, our smooth estimate at time 7, our double smooth estimate at time 7, is going to be 4 plus 4 plus 3, divided by k, which is again 3.66. So now if we want to make predictions from our double smooth estimates, our formula is going to be our predicted y at time t is equal to beta 0, and now we can add an extra coefficient, beta 1, and then times L, where L is just going to be the length or intervals ahead of our last recorded observation. So our beta 0 is still going to be equal to our smooth estimate at time n. And now our beta 1 is going to be equal to 2 times our smooth estimate at time n minus our double smooth estimate at time n and then divided by k minus 1. So we can start off with beta 0, which is just our smooth estimate at time n, which we found to be 3. So beta 0 is equal to 3. And then for our beta 1, it's going to be equal to 2 times our smooth estimate at time n, which is again 3. And then our double smooth estimate at time n. So we can add those which is going to be 3.66 and then divided by k minus 1 so 3 minus 1 and this will produce a value of negative 0.66 so now our final formula for predictions is going to be the predicted value at time t is equal to our beta 0 and then minus our beta 1 times l so our last recorded observation was at time 7. So if we want to find the predicted value at time 8, we would simply plug in our formula 3 minus 0.66 and then times 1, because it's one step ahead. And this will produce an estimate of 2.34. And if we want to find our predicted value at time 9, it would just be 3 minus 0.66 times 2 to produce a value of 1.68, and then you can continue on and on and on. So why use double smoothing? So we learned with just simple smoothing, or when we only smooth once, our predictions would just form a flat line. Now the problem with this is if we have some type of trends in our data, it won't be able to predict for that. But if we use double exponential smoothing, we're then able to predict for these trends. So here's our time series from time 1 to 8, and then y of t is just our values of y at time t. Now if we were to plot this, we can see that it's just going to form a straight line. So it's going to have a positive slope or positive trend, and it's going to have a slope equal to 2. Now if we were to form our smooth series with k is equal to 4, so we lose our first three observations, and then our smooth series would just be 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. And then if we wanted to create our double smooth series, we'd lose the first six observations. And at time 7, our double smooth estimate would just be 8 and 10. So notice how our double smooth estimates are lower than our smooth estimates. So we're going to expect this whenever we have a positive trend in time. Because at time 7, so our smooth estimate at time 7 is going to be 11, which is going to use values 14, 12, and 10. So it's only going to extend back to time 5. But our double smooth estimate at time 7, or a value of 8, is going to extend back to time 5 to our smooth series. And then the smooth series estimate at time 5, or the 7, takes values all the way back to observation 3. So if we have a positive trend in time, we expect observations earlier in the series to have smaller values, or this part of the series to be lower than this part of the series. So anytime we have a positive trend, we expect our double smooth estimate numbers to be smaller. Now the second thing, 
So the formula for our predictions from our double smooth series was y of t is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times L. So this beta 1 parameter estimate is essentially our slope. So if we were to find the value of our beta 1 estimate, we learn that the formula is equal to 2 times our predicted value at time n minus or our smooth value at time n minus our double smooth value at time n and then over k minus 1. So if we were to solve for that using our k is equal to 4, we would get 2 times our smooth estimate at time n, which was 13, and then minus our double smooth estimate at time n, which was 10, and then divided by our k minus 1, so 4 minus 1, and this is going to produce a value of 2. So notice the slope for our predicted values is going to be 2, and from our original series, it was also 2. So we're able to successfully model the trend in our data using double smoothing. So to make sure that wasn't just a fluke, so these are going to be the same, this is the same original series, but now we're just using k is equal to 3, and then these are our smooth and our double smooth estimates. So again, the slope is equal to 2 of our original series. So now if we want to find our beta 1 coefficient, or our slope for our predictions, it's still going to be equal to 2 times our uh, smooth series at time n, and then minus our double smooth series at time n, over k minus 1, so 3 minus 1. So if we plug in, it's going to be 2 times 14 minus 12 over 3 minus 1. And again, we're going to get a beta 1 coefficient of 2. So no matter what k you use, you're still going to get your beta 1 or your slope for your predictions equal to 2, which is the true slope of our original values. So that's, so we successfully are able to predict. Exponential smoothing. So unlike in simple moving average, exponential smoothing is going to use all the past observations in order to form your smooth average. And it's going to do this using a tuning parameter, w. So w is going to control how much weight to put on the most recent observations. So instead of treating each observation equally for weights, exponential smoothing is instead going to give most weights to the most recent observations. So our w value can take any value less than 1 and greater than or equal to 0. So if w is equal to 0, we're going to have no smoothing, or we're going to get the original series. So for small values of w, we're going to get the most weight on our most recent observations, so we're going to have the least smoothing. And then as we increase our value of w, it's going to increase in a more smooth series. So there's two formulas you need to know for exponential smoothing. One is going to be that your smooth estimate at time t is equal to 1 minus w times your y value at time t plus w times y value at t minus 1 plus so on, so on, so on, until you get to your w to the t times your y value at time 0. And the second formula you need to know is that your smooth estimate at time t is equal to 1 minus w times your y value at time t plus w times your smooth estimate at t minus 1. So essentially, this is going to take all the observations to form your smooth estimate, but it's going to use no past smooth estimates. This one, you're going to solve recursively, but you need to know your past smooth estimate. So to start off, here's our original series from time 0 to 4. So if we want to find our smooth estimate at time 0, so since we don't know any of the previously smoothed estimates, we're going to have to use this formula on the left. So we're going to say our smooth estimate is equal to 1 minus 0.4, because we're going to use a w of 0.4, and then times our y value at time 0, which is just 0. So we're going to get a smooth estimate equal to 0 at time 0. 
and then we can find our smooth estimate at time 1. So we'll use the same formula again. So 1 minus w, and then times 1, which is going to be our y value at time t, and then plus w, which is 0 0.4, times our y value at time 0, which is just 0. And we'll get a smooth estimate at time 1 equal to 0.6. And we can find our smooth estimate at time 2. Again, we'll use the same formula. So 1 minus w times our y value at time 2, which is 3, plus our w times our y value at time 1, which is 1, plus w squared times our y value times 0, which is 0. And we get our smooth estimate of time 2 equal to 2.04. So now instead, if at time 2 we want to use the other formula to make it a little shorter, or a recursive formula, we could say that 1 minus w, and then our y value at time t, which was just 3, and then plus our w times our smooth estimate at time t minus 1. So our smooth estimate at time t minus 1 we found to be 0.6. So if you plug this in we'll get the same exact estimate or smooth estimate we did for our other formula 2.04. And then if we want to find our smooth estimate at time 3 we can just use the recursive formula to make it easier. So we'll do 1 minus w times our y value at time 3, which we found to be, which is 2, and then plus w times our smooth estimate, which we found to be 2.04 for time t minus 1. And we'll get a smooth estimate of 2.016. And then finally, our smooth estimate time 4, just 1 minus 0.4, times our y value at time 4, which is 4, plus w times our last smooth estimate, or 2.016. So with our recursive formula, we, we have to know the smooth estimate but once we of the previous observation, but if we know this, it's very simple to solve. Now with our other formula, essentially you have to start off with using this formula to at least find your smooth estimate at time zero. And then once you have at least one smooth estimate, you can move to your recursive formula. Or you can just use this formula all the way through if you have all your current and past observations. Then if we want to make predictions from our exponential smooth series, we just say at y of t is equal to beta zero, or beta zero is equal to our smooth estimate at time n. So it's going to be the exact same as our simple moving average. So if we find our smooth estimate at time n, it's just going to be 3.2064. So if you want to find the predicted value at time 5, it would just be 3.2064. If you wanted to find the predicted value at time 6, 3.2064, and so on and so on. Choose in W. So in the last example, we used W is equal to 0.4, and these are the smooth estimates we got. So how do we know if we chose the correct W? So you want to choose a W that minimizes the sum of squared one-step prediction errors, which is just going to be equal to the summation from 1 to T of our Y value at time T minus our smooth estimate at time T minus 1 squared. So if we're to solve for this, we just take our y value at time t, so we'll start with 1, and then minus our t minus our smooth estimate at time t minus 1, which is just 0. So 1 minus 0 squared, and then plus our y observed value at time 2, which is 3, minus our smooth estimate at time 1, and then our observed value at time 3 minus our smooth estimate at time 2. And then finally, our observed value at time 4 minus our smooth estimate at time 3.
and this would produce a value of 10.698. So, in order to find if this is the best w, we would then try a different value of w and see what number we get, and ultimately choose whichever w creates the smallest sum of squared one step prediction errors. So, you solve for it just like you would any tuning parameter. Double exponential smoothing. So, with double exponential smoothing, we're just going to apply exponential smoothing to our already exponentially smooth series. So, our formulas we're going to use, or the formulas that we used for our original exponential smoothing, were that our smooth series at time t is equal to 1 minus w times our y value at time t plus w times our smoothed estimate at time t minus 1. Or, our smoothed estimate at time t is equal to 1 minus w times our y value at time t plus w times y to the t minus 1, and so on, so on, so on, until w to the t, y of 0. Now with our double exponential smoothing, the formulas we're going to use are our doubly smoothed estimate at time t is equal to 1 minus w, times our smooth estimate at time t plus w times our doubly smooth estimate at time t minus 1. Or our smooth estimate, our double smooth estimate at time t is equal to 1 minus w times our smooth estimate at time t plus w times our smooth estimate at time t minus 1, so on, so on, so on, or w to the t times our smooth estimate at time 0. So notice the only difference in these formulas from exponential to double exponential is that instead of using our original series or yt we're now going to use our smooth series and whenever we used our smooth series now we're going to use our double smooth series and the same thing for the other side instead of using yt we use our smooth series so instead of smoothing once we're essentially just smoothing twice the exact same formulas so let's start off with finding our smooth estimate, our double smooth estimate at time zero. So the formula we're going to use is just going to be the one on the right, because again, that one doesn't use our double smooth series, or you can't solve that one recursively. So when we use the one on the right, we're just going to use 1 minus w, and again, we're using a w equal to 0.4. So 1 minus 0.4 and then our smooth estimate at time zero, which we found to be zero. So our double smooth estimate at time zero is just gonna be zero also. Now our double smooth estimate at time one. I'm gonna do one minus w, and then times our y value at time one, which is 0 0.6, and then plus w times our smooth estimate at time zero, which was zero. And we'll get a value of 0.36. And then our smooth estimate at time two, it's again just one minus w, and then times our y value, our smoothed value at time two, which is 2.04 plus w times our smooth value at time 1, which is 0 0.6, and then plus w squared times our smooth estimate at time 0, which was 0. And we'll get a value of 1.368. Now, if instead we wanted to solve for our smooth estimate recursively at time 2, so our double smooth estimate at time 2, we would just do 1 minus our w, times our smooth estimate at time t, which is 2.04, and then plus w times our double smooth estimate at time t is equal to 1, which we found to be 0.36. And again, we get the exact same estimate of 1.368. And now we can solve recursively for the rest of the way through. So our smooth estimate at time 3, our double smooth estimate at time 3, we're going to use 1 minus w times our smooth estimate at time 3, 
which is 2.016. And then plus W times our last doubly smooth estimate, which we found to be 1.368. And we would get 1.7568. And then finally, our last one, our smooth estimate time four, we use one minus W times our smooth estimate at time four just 3.2064 and then plus w times our last doubly smoothed which is 1.7568 and we get a smooth series of time four of 2.62656 so now we can add these numbers to our series so we're going to get doubly smooth estimate At time 0, which is just 0. At time 1, 0.36. At time 2, 1.368. At time 3, 1.7568. And then finally, at time 4, 2.62656. So now that we made our series, we can make predictions from our series. So our predictive value y is going to be equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times L. But now our formula for beta 0 is going to change. So our formula for beta 0 is going to be equal to 2 times our smooth series at time n minus our, smooth our double smooth series at time n. And then our beta 1 is going to be equal to 1 minus w over w times our smooth series at time n minus our double smooth series at time n. So first we want to solve for our beta 0. It's going to be 2 and then times our smooth series at time n. So we look at our chart, smooth series at time n, find to be 3.2064. And then minus our double smooth series at time n, which we find to be 2.62656. And we're going to get a beta 0 estimate equal to 3.79. And now if we solve for our beta 1, so 1 minus w over w, so 1 minus 0.4 over 0.4 times our smooth series of time n, which we found to be 3.2064, minus our double smooth series of time n, which we found to be 2.62656, and we're going to get a beta 1 estimate equal to 0.87. So our final formula for predictions is going to be equal to our beta 0 plus our beta 1 times L which is just the steps ahead of our last record observation. So if we want to find the predictive value at time 5, it would simply be 3.79 plus 0.87. And then since time 4 was our last recorded observation, so at time 5, it's one increment ahead. So we're just going to set L equal to 1, and we get a prediction of 4.66. And if we want to find the predictive value at time equals 6, 3.79 plus 0.87. Now we're going to use two steps ahead, and we get a predictive value of 5.53. And then so on, so on, so on. And just like simple moving average, if you have a trend in your data, you want to use double exponential smoothing instead of just exponential smoothing. Okay, so that wraps up this section. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.